Hi, I'm Louisa Beck. And I'm Rick Nowak. We're reporters for the Washington Post Berlin Bureau. Welcome to Berlin's Tempelhof Airport. Built by the Nazis in the 1930s, uh, Tempelhof was the world's biggest building and an entryway to Hitler's Germania. It's still one of the world's largest construction sites and it sits right in the center of Berlin. This building has had a lot of different names over the years. Uh, the stage for an acrobatic air circus, a US military airbase, bowling hall, refugee shelter, concert venue, startup haven. Let's go inside. This is the main entrance hall. It's imposing, spacious, and timeless all at once. The halls are mostly empty now, but it feels like you could run into a US air pilot or smoking Berliner or some coat-wearing detective at any second. Yeah, there's some mysterious edginess about the place that doesn't make you want to hang out there for too long. I spoke to Wolfgang Scheche, he's an architectural historian, about why it feels that way and what's behind the design. He told me that when the Nazis built it, they wanted something absolutely timeless and ahistorical. They wanted to be the ones writing history. Not just back then, but thousands of years into the future. So what you get are these vast dimensions, monumental lines and arches, without any particular style. Here's an old photo hanging inside the main hall. You can get a sense for the scale of the airport during the Nazi era. In the summer of 1933, Hitler himself began sketching plans for the airport. For him, the airfield was a matter of prestige. Hitler soon commissioned architect Ernst Sagebiel to finish planning it, but they never finished. Preparation for World War II took priority, and to this day, the airport still isn't complete. And this mural here is a memorial for the American candy bombers. To understand why it's in the middle of this building, we have to jump 20 years into the future. It's the Cold War, Germany is split in half, and West Berlin is sort of an island right in the middle of communist East Germany. But the Allied forces, which include the Americans, the British, and the French, control West Berlin. When I visited Tempelhof, I ran into three Berliners who remember the men in this mural really well. That's Asma, Barbara and their aunt Heidemarie. Heidemarie was just about eight years old when the Soviets effectively cut West Berlin off from receiving any supplies. They wanted to take control over West Berlin, but the Americans found a workaround. For almost a year, they flew into Tempelhof to drop off food and supplies at a rate of about one plane every three minutes. Heidemarie is saying that some pilots used to make these miniature parachutes out of matchboxes, fill them up with candies and throw them out of the plane for the kids in West Berlin. Hence the name, Candy Bomber. This is a former U.S. troop carrier used during the blockade. When I visited, I met Lawrence Dixon. I was an air traffic controller for the Air Force. For the American Air Force? Yeah, U.S. Air Force, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was stationed here with the Air Force when I first got here. It was threatening the time when the wall came down. So, and um, I came in December 1993, um, of course in 89, and the wall came down in November of 89. So it was just, it had just come down just and come you down. were here? Yeah. Well, when I just got here, yeah. The mood of the city was, um, yeah, everybody was happy. It was more or less, people were as excited. And, um, and on the day I met him, he was showing his daughter Tia where he once worked. Okay, so your name is? Tia Dixon. And I was like pretty overwhelmed when we just got here because it's the first time that I was really standing in front of the building because it's quite huge and I was kind of, it looks like a building that you see in the movies where the government does like <laughs> secret stuff because it's closed now. So it's really like it looks a little suspicious. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's so old, I guess. So now we're on the roof of the airport. Um, until a few years ago, this place was bustling with tourists and business travelers. But in 2008, it stopped its operations because it was simply 
too risky to land planes in the middle of the city. So it just stood empty for a while, until 2015, when, during the height of the refugee crisis, parts of the airport were converted into emergency shelters for refugees. I spoke with Parwitz Shafizad, and he's a former journalist who fled the Taliban in Afghanistan in 2015. I am Parwitz Shafizad. I am 26 year old, and I'm from Afghanistan, from the north side of Afghanistan, Baghlan province. And he lived in one of Tempelhof's hangars, like this one, for over one year. At the time, there were almost 500 people sharing a single hangar with a 52-foot ceiling. Imagine, in one hangar is more than 500 from Iraq, Syria, Eritrea, Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan. Some children in the middle of night they start crying. They are saying one word, it's make like more than 500 sound. Most of the refugees have moved out now, or to temporary trailers that have been set up on the airfield. For the city, uh, the big question now is what should be done with this airport. Um, in a referendum in 2014, Berliners voted to preserve the airfield as it is. But just to give you an idea, it's the size of the country Monaco in southern Europe. In the summer, you'll see thousands of people barbecuing here or competing in roller skating or board kite surfing competitions. Since most of the refugees have moved out of their airport's hangars, startups and museums may soon move in. Some parts of it will be turned into concert venues. And over the next several years, some $370 million will be poured into rebuilding parts of Tempelhof. So in the midst of rising rents, Berliners hold on to this open space as a reminder of its past. But it's also an experimental playground and a space to imagine the future of this city. <laughs>